logging into CyberWorld, where you want to go first is to the Identity User Portal and use the Demo Role Changer to set your role to Ava. Ava is the member of the development team, the persona that we're using to illustrate the user experience for developers. So we'll start with Ava, and you can tell when you're Ava by reloading your rights and when the Azure Secrets or the AWS Secrets Manager tile appears, that indicates that your role has changed to Ava. So you click on that, and Ava's domain really is AWS. Ava is not a CyberArk admin, doesn't have access to CyberArk, PrivCloud, any of that. She does have access to AWS Secrets Manager, and if we click on that, you see we're in the North Virginia region, uh, US East 1. We're in the uh, Amer SE, or CyberArk Amer SE account. We look at the account number, it ends in 4925. This will all be relevant when we look at the configuration. Uh, but you can see we're logged in as Ava. Uh, if we uh, filter on DSO for DevSecOps, then we see two secrets here. One called User Managed Secret. The other says it's from Secrets Hub uh, and this data, MySQL Server database account. You can see the description here. This is the secret that's managed by Secrets Hub. Uh, looking at the user managed secrets, though, this uh, the the user retains full CRUD capabilities on non CyberArk secrets. So I could delete this if I wanted to. I can schedule for deletion, and it's all good. I can cancel that deletion. I could go in and uh, edit the secret and change it to some Bazbar Biff. Um, and save that. So the point being is the users still have full read, write, uh, you know, create, delete uh, capabilities around their own secrets, but for the the CyberArk managed secrets, they do not. So if we go to the the secrets of managed secret, uh, go in here, try and delete that, it won't let us. It will throw an error saying you don't have permissions. Similarly, if you try and edit it, but you can. Retrieve it. You can read these credentials. You can see that the password here is CyberArk $44 uh, with the other uh, properties that were synced over for this. So this is basically a mirror of the account in, uh, this, uh, in this safe. So you see here's the name of the safe. Here's the name of the account. And that basically composes the name of the secret in Secrets Manager. Safe and the, the account name. Um, so one other thing that, that you can do uh, that the user retains control of is the ability to replicate this secret, this CyberArk managed secret, to other regions in this account. Uh, and that does not involve anything from CyberArk. That's a pure AWS action. But they can select other regions to replicate this secret to. And as Secrets Hub changes this password, as we'll, we'll do, show here in a moment, that will then be replicated by AWS to these other regions, which is kind of a cool feature. Um, and it's very fast. It's, uh, the, there's very low latency between the time the secret's changed in this region and the time that it gets replicated to the other regions. It's basically as soon as I navigate over to it, when I tested it, it was already there. So we'll leave Ava here for a moment uh, and go and see how this was configured. We've seen the end user experience. We've seen that it's basically just AWS Secrets Manager, except that they have read access to the CyberArk Managed Secrets. Um, so we need to go uh, look at how this is implemented in CyberArk. To do that, we need to be a member of the CyberArk team, so we will change our role to Mike. And you can tell when you're Mike by when that AWS Secrets Manager tile disappears. Um, so when that's gone, it means that we're now Mike. And so what we're going to do now is, again, go back to demo cyberart.cloud and we're going to go into privilege cloud so this is where we're going to see that safe that was mentioned dso secrets hub we'll go look at that safe and look at its configuration and see how it's tagged to be used by secrets hub so again look for dso devsecops here is the safe if we go and look at its members we see that here is secrets hub the secrets hub user so this is the user that, or the, the CyberArk user that allows the Secrets Hub process to log in and access this safe and sync the accounts in this safe over to, to, to uh, Secrets, AWS Secrets Manager. Um, 
Now, if we look at the account itself, then we can go uh, and, and see that, again, search for DSO. As that comes up, here is... Uh, so what we can do is, is actually trigger a change here. And what I'm going to do is trigger this to cyber arc one one at at cyber cyber arc whoops cyber arc one one at at so the passwords are the same now remember it was cyber arc four four dollar dollar so uh, when we trigger this that's changed it in the vault you can see that CPM is disabled here and basically we're not doing a CPM demo we're not looking at how CPMs change this password in the actual MySQL database um, what we're showing is that Secrets Hub is going to propagate that change to AWS Secrets Manager. The new password will show up over there. Before we go there, though, let's look at how Secrets Hub is configured. So we've seen how the safe is tagged or basically marked for syncing to Secrets, to Secrets Manager. Um, the way that we configure Secrets Hub to do that, though, is done in the, the Secrets Hub configuration uh, where we set up that Secrets Secrets Manager, AWS Secrets Manager, in that region for that account. We set it up as a target. So here we see the the name of our account. Uh, we see the ID here ending in 4925, like we saw for Ava. Uh, if we look at the uh, editing example here, uh, there's our account number, there's our region. So that's basically the, the driver for licensing for Secrets Hub, is account and region. Typically, you only need to replicate or, or sync to one region because then you can use AWS replication to then sync to other regions, uh, not using Secrets Hub. But basically, the license will be driven by your targets, which is the, the combination of account and region. Um, what makes this possible, though, what makes it possible for Secrets Hub to access Secrets Manager is this IAM role that has to be created using a CloudFormation template that we provide. Um, a, an administrator for the account needs to uh, to load that CloudFormation template, uh, run it, and which basically creates this IAM role that permits the Secrets Hub process to access Secrets Manager in this target, you know, in this account, in this region. Um, and so that's the, uh, the basis for granting access to Secrets Hub into that environment. And you can test the connection to make sure it's all working correctly. Now, if we cancel that, so that sets up the access to Secrets Manager the last bit is to say, what safes do we want synced to that target? And that's where the policy comes in. So we've got a Secrets Hub policy. We see CyberArk emerge. Uh, here's our target that we created. So this is the linkage between that safe that has the Secrets Hub user uh, as a member and the target, which has that IAM role that allows access. And that's what permits Secrets Hub to come over and then change the the access to, to create new secrets or to change these secrets uh, after they've been, been rotated by CPM. So that is our uh, Secrets Hub demo. Uh, the only caution I would give is if you're not comfortable talking about dual accounts, because inevitably when we get into password change for applications and people understand that there's some latency, Secrets Hub runs every minute. So there is the possibility of you know, a, up to uh, almost an entire minute where the application could have the old password after CPM has changed the password in the database. So dual accounts is the solution for that. If you're not comfortable or familiar with dual accounts, you might want to skip showing password rotation and just try and avoid uh, that conversation simply because uh, dual accounts really is the best answer to that, that uh, objection or that question. With all that said, happy demos.